This man will take on Goidi Yamauchi at Bellator 284, the main event. He is Naaman Gracie. Naaman, thanks for joining me today, man. Hey, guys. Great to be here. Now, I guess uh, training was long and rough today, eh? <laughs> yes, man. Yeah. Anyways, it's uh, media day for you, not the fight week media day, but obviously the virtual media day with a bunch of callers. The first question I have to ask, what's the worst question you've ever been asked? Oh, it's not the worst, but it's the most common one. It's uh, how does it feel to be a Gracie fighting? Is it too much weight on your shoulders so everybody <laughs> asks me this question every time <laughs> of course i won't ask that question but i do have sort of a <laughs> sort of a sidetracked question from that because i don't know if you have answered this or you haven't but i haven't seen it in any of your interviews obviously coming up through the lineage you got your black belt whatnot uh you didn't win any major titles at the black belt rank i think actually your major titles were at purple belt so what made you stop competing in jiu-jitsu to move forward to mma 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 made me stop i fell in love with mma so when i got my purple belt i started transitioning to mma i started learning boxing uh doing more no gi doing more wrestling so mma got me off from the jiu-jitsu competitions you know was it was it sort of following in Henzo's footsteps? Yeah, kind of, but also on my own because I always wanted to be an MMA fighter and not a jiu-jitsu competition fighter, you know? There's also all these guys, you know, there's the jiu-jitsu guys that get into MMA. Obviously, we see guys nowadays doing it, but back in the day, there was, you know, th there was syndromes in MMA when it came to the jiu-jitsu guys. We always saw guys like, say, George Gurgel, for instance. The George Gurgel syndrome was... He didn't want to rely on his jiu-jitsu. He always thought he was a stand-up guy. He went in there, tried to strike with guys, never went to his bread and butter, which was the jiu-jitsu. Now, looking at your timeline, obviously you had decisions and submissions leading up until you finally got that TKO victory. How sweet was it to finally get that under your belt and, and let people know that you do have hands? It was great. But it was great also because that happened after I moved uh, to California and I started training with Massa Rafael Cordero. And uh, it happened right after. So I moved here. Then I have a, I had a fight here doing the camps with him and I got the, 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 the KO. And that was great because it showed a little bit of his work too, you know. But uh, I still love, like more to, to finish my fights by submission than by KO, you know. Of course, and obviously you're not going to sway from one to the other, but you know what it does? It makes people think a lot more, and it makes your opponents think a lot more, right? Yes, definitely. It becomes uh, uh, another weapon in my game, you know, and the more weapons that we have, the better. So it's, it's great, I think. You said you moved out to California, obviously training with Rafael Cordero. You said, how much have you seen your game grow since making that move? Man, I've seen a lot of growth in my game, especially on the stand-up area, but also all around uh, uh, as a fighter, you know, because uh, I, I like to say that Master Rafael Cordero is not only a, a, a stand-up coach, he's an MMA coach, and that makes a big difference because he opens my eyes for the whole game, you know. He never asked me to just stay on a stand-up. He actually always asked me to go for my takedowns and, and to win fights, whatever the fight might be easier. And I think that's a, a big difference on training with him, you know? Definitely. Hanzo was a little bit like that too. Hanzo was a little bit the same way. Like, he, if you see the fight will be easier standing, he'll tell me to go on a, for a stand-up fight, you know? For sure. Now, let's go back. This will be your second fight in 2022. You lost a decision to Logan Storley in February. What do you take away from that fight going into this one? And what surprised you most from Logan in that fight? Uh, I think his hand surprised me a lot. I didn't expect him to be sharp like he was standing. And I kept the fight standing for too long, you know. And I think that... Even though I was landing a lot of shots, he was landing on me too. And it was a very tough fight for both of us, you know. And uh, it made me grow a lot, uh, that fight, as a fighter. And I hope we can show in my next few fights, you know. 
Do you wish you got in there sooner after that fight? Uh, fighting again, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not really. I think uh, this being what, five gonna be five months since I fought him, so I think it's uh, it's a good time because we we lose a lot of weight and we go to a lot of hard camps for a fight. So I think uh, five months after a fight, it's 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 good enough. Definitely. Now this guy you're fighting, Goiti Yamauchi. Obviously, he's very decorated. He's got a, a a big rap sheet on his record. You know, he's 27 and five. Uh, very yeah. well known. Very well known out there. A lot of ring and cage time. He is originally from Japan. Moved to Brazil. Do you consider him Brazilian? Yeah, of course. <laughs> he speaks Portuguese. You know, he's a. <laughs> He definitely a Brazilian. Now, what do you know about him, and and where do you feel like you can ex? Well, obviously, without giving away game plans and and details yeah. and whatnot, how do you feel like you can exploit this guy? Uh, I think he's a great fighter. To tell the truth, he's gonna not gonna be an easy fight. He's a very good fighter, a very good uh, submission artist. So I need to watch out for his submissions, and I think uh, I think. Uh, it's not going to be an easy fight, but I think I can pull this off for sure. Judging from your last outings, this should be a win because you've bounced between wins, loss, win, loss. <laughs> <laughs> if record prevails, this would be a win. How do you see yourself claiming a victory in this fight? You said it won't be tough, I, but you think you'll be able to do it. Yeah, and I think I, I can finish him by submission, so I'm hoping to win this fight by submission. One more thing before I let you go here, Naaman. I, I know you still teach jujitsu and whatnot. Obviously, that's a passion of yours. I, I'm heading out. I have to teach jujitsu in about three hours from now. Uh, it's side control <laughs> module tonight, this month. We're going uh, over some side control stuff. But for you, what's what's your favorite thing about teaching Brazilian jujitsu? I think it's the change that we have on people's lives. You know, like when you teach a kid that is shy. There is a bully at school and we are able to change their life for the good, you know, like they become more, more, they believe more on themselves and uh, it, it's great, man. Not only kids, but adults too. Like I think Jiu Jitsu, it's, uh, it's great because it changed people's lives for, for, for good, you know. So I think we have a big, uh, a big product in our hands and I think that's what my great grandfather saw many years ago, the power that Jiu-Jitsu has on the world and the influence on people. And I think that's uh, the good thing on being a Jiu-Jitsu teacher, you know, is to change people's lives for the better. That it is. Do you think we'll ever see you compete in Jiu-Jitsu again? Maybe, man. Maybe if they want me to do those uh, super fights, I can definitely do it, you know. It all depends on uh, how much they're paying, but I can definitely <laughs> do it. <laughs> Anyways, man, he is Naaman Gracie. He takes on Goiti Yamauchi, Bellator 284 main event, August 12th. Good luck, my friend. Thank you, brother. Thank you.